What's up everybody, my name is Vince. Welcome to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be unboxing, setting up, going over the specs of Milwaukee's new 12 inch double bevel compound sliding motor saw. You know what you're thinking to yourself, hey Vince, why haven't you had this on the channel sooner? Well, if you've been here for a while, you'll know that when it comes to large saws, I believe that they should be corded. I've been using a corded motor saw my entire life. Probably you have too, because up until now, these big saws weren't able to be powered by batteries. Well, we're gonna find out if Milwaukee has changed the game and it's coming right up after this message from our sponsor, BCG Construction. So here it is, this is Milwaukee. Look at it. Dual bevel sliding compound motor saw kit with one key. What does that mean? That means with one key, you're able to maybe adjust some features of the saw. I doubt it. I, I really don't know how embedded the one key is into this saw other than you're able to inventory and track the saw. For the small business owner and contractors out there that have to have tools checked in and checked out, keep track of them, where they're at, this is a, it's a huge feature. Did I tell you it's product number 273921HG? That means it's gonna come with the battery and the charger. It comes with a 12 amp hour battery. It also comes with a rapid charger. You can see some specifications. They're saying it's equal to 15 amp power, okay? And it talks about track and manage. So that one key feature is probably not gonna do anything other than track and manage, okay? You're not gonna be able to draw just blade speed or anything crazy via the one key application. It says maximum productivity, one charge on that 12 amp hour battery will give you 330 cross cuts in three and a quarter baseboard. Now this is gonna be the second time I've had my hands on this saw. The first time was in this video here at NPS for 2019. And I will say that Milwaukee did have me a little like, woo, I really couldn't believe their performance. We made multiple cuts in, in base molding and other materials with this saw. I was impressed. So without further ado, let's get this thing unboxed and set up so you know what to expect when you drop your hard-earned cash. How much hard-earned cash? The kit. It's $899. If you wanted to go bare tool, if you had plenty of 12 amp hour batteries and a ton of charges already, I believe that kit right now is $699. Did I say kit? I meant bare tool. That bare tool is $699. If I could find a really good price on it, both, both forms, I'll leave a link down in the description for you. But let me get out my power too. Oh, wait a minute. This is the Ojimbo too, sorry. We're gonna take off this handy dandy packing tape. So let me know down in the comments section below. Do you like the format, this format of video? This isn't the first time we've done this where we've opened these boxes together and set these tools up together. So you know what to expect when you're getting your new saw. We have instructions here for charger and the tool. You're gonna to wanna to read these both. And I don't care how many times you read this chart, something might have changed. You want to read these fully. I'm going to set them aside right now. First thing out of the box is another box. You can expect that there's a battery in here. That's what I'm saying. Do I know? This could be a, a bucket of bolts in here for all I know. But just as I assumed, there is a battery. There is more instructions for the battery. It says important safety instructions. Read this as well. You'd never be too safe. I'm gonna tell you this much. I don't have an enormous amount of 12 amp hour batteries. I'm gonna set this on the charger so that we can make some test cuts because we know you're gonna to wanna to see some test cuts. Here's a new, another rapid charger. This is Milwaukee standard rapid charger. I, I will tell you this, if you wanted to have an idea of the specification of how long it would take to charge that 12 amp hour battery on a rapid charger, you could probably either stay tuned to this video or you could go to this video here. This way you have an idea. In the box, they've included a 60 tooth or tethys. This is a 12 inch finish blade, 60 tethys. 
They've also included this, this part, which is probably a kickstand that goes on the rear of the saw so it doesn't knock over. Here's your dust bag. It's generous in size. Whoa, what's that? Pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Then we have two handles. These look like they're made out of cast and then machined aluminum. We have some screws. Oh, that means I'm going to need... Oh, guess what? These are Torx heads. So I'll assume that the included wrenches will probably fit those fasteners. We have a material clamp. Pretty nice. Not only there's many other parts that are separate, so assembly should be pretty rapid. I'm going to set this bad boy down. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop this back in here. A lot of people are going to ask me what kind of stand I'm going to pair this saw with. I would like it to be Milwaukee. I'm working on getting that. You know me, though. I always like to get a deal. I don't like the rolling style of motor saw stands as much as the four-legged because generally those four-legged stands have longer outriggers to hold longer material. The first thing I will tell you is that for a 12-inch sliding motor saw, this thing's actually pretty light. One of my first things I always say about a 12-inch motor saw is that because of the size, does it really need to be portable? Are right, you going to be throwing this saw around? All we need to do now is, is push down on our saw. We're going to pull out this little knurled, this little knurled button, okay? And that will let the saw up. At that point, you'll be able to pull out your styrofoam. Pretty cool. Rails feel pretty smooth. Because of this little rubber dust chute, this little rubber booty here, if you're going to be making cross cuts, you're going to need to move that fence out. Nice. I'm not going to say it's revolutionary. It's, it's like every other material clamp, but it's nice. And it's, it, you know, it's pretty cool that they included it, right? I'm going to set this off to the side, though, so it doesn't get in the way. It's got our handles installed here. And another purpose of the handles is to support longer material. Here's the deal, though. Like, you know, if you're working with you know, 16 foot lengths of crown molding or, 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 you know, materials. It will only support so much. <laughs> so you're going to get your four screws. They're going to install on the top side. You don't need to go underneath if you were wondering. At this stage of the game, I'm not certain why there are two threaded holes here, but you know, whatever. Maybe they're for some type of accessory. You want this handle to be at the same level as the rest of the table. And it looks to be good. So we can tighten this down. Keep that flat. It's good there. It's a little, I mean, you know, it's like a little bit right here. You know, I, I'm a carpenter, I'm not a machinist. It doesn't look like it would affect my ability to, to make the, the cuts to complete my job. Does that make any sense? We're going to repeat the process on the other side of the saw so we get the other handle on. We get a handle on this thing. And those handles, they kind of sit right here on this ledge. It's like machined perfectly. I guess you can make some micro adjustments if you wanted to, right? If you, if, if need be. Just gonna snug it up. I'm gonna check it with the square again. That's pretty doggone good. See that? Oh! Did you hear that click? Okay, ready? We're splitting hairs. You're, you're talking about like 60 fourths, 30, 30 seconds, maybe. Pretty good tolerances. Are they the best tolerances I've ever seen? I didn't say that. 
but I don't think it would keep me from accurately installing molding. We're gonna install our kickstand, okay? Make sure that the bend is towards the ground. Okay. Now we have the blade to install. I will tell you, while the saw is upside down though, why don't we take a look at the mech? Oh my God. So I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to look at the mechanism, the mechanism here. And if you look at it, let, let me, let me get something. No, that's plastic. All right. So this is plastic, like the hand, hand dial. All right. This is the lock though. And you'll see the lock presses, and this is metal, this is metal, pressing onto the table. It's a, the clamp presses onto the table, clamps it in place. This is the quick release for your detents. You'll see it actuates metal, a metal stop. So the plastic actuates a metal stop, detent stop. As lightweight as this is, I'm shocked to see so much metal. There's a lot of metal on this saw, which is, is good news in my opinion. Let's get it, let's get it right side up again. Now, nice metal miter scale. You see your notches here for your, your most used miters, okay? Really nice, I mean, it's built really nice. Now we have a lockout, okay? We have a lockout so that we can move throughout that scale without having to actuate that detent release, okay? And what we can do is, let's just say we needed to be at, I don't know, we needed to be at one degree or we needed to be at 46 degrees, okay? We would move over to 46 degrees or we would move over to 46 degrees here Okay, and then we would lock, we would lock down our miter. Okay, this would be our lock. Okay, now you could do that without using this lockout, right? We would have to, we would move the 45, we would then hit the release, go over to 46, lock our table. Okay, that would be one way of doing it if you didn't want to lock out your detents. Personally, some people will, even when using their saw, if they're in a, pre, a, a detent, they won't, lock this, they won't lock this down. Me personally, I like to have the extra insurance of locking down, and I'm glad that Milwaukee decided to stay with this quick release and enable latch. I like this latch. I like this release. This is a good system, very intuitive. Very easy to work with. I do like the, the, the lockout as well. Pretty cool. And the table moves very smoothly. Moves left to right very smoothly. You can see here, we go all the way to 55 degrees to the left. And over here we go all the way, to the right, we go all the way to 60 degrees. Okay, if you wanted, if you wanted to know. So if you are, in bypass mode, the way to disable that is to just push up on the release, boom. You're out of that bypass mode. Let's get the blade on. All right, so let's push down, let's lift up. We're gonna move our guard out of the way. Look at that, it's like a handy dandy. It, it's like the engineers over at Milwaukee intended to do that. Whoa. So it looks as though we have a, a stop. We're gonna go righty Lucy. I'm gonna take half of our blade clamp off on our screw. We'll get our blade. It's a 60 T fisses. Put our blade on our arbor, put our clamp back on. Put our reverse 
I reverse nut on. We're going to tighten this up. We're going to push down our blade lock and we're just going to snug up the blade. Don't over tighten the blade. In a binding situation, you want that blade to be able to slip. Did you, did you know that? Boom, our blade's installed. Now, we have a couple of other little pieces that have to go on. First, I want to stow my tool, my included tool. You don't want to lose this. As you can see, everything you need to assemble or disassemble, change the blade, is done with this one tool. All right, I want to stow it because I don't want it to go. I don't want it to go anywhere. I don't want to lose it. It's right here for you at all times. Now, there's another thing that I want to test because I'd like to let you know. I want to let you know. I want to let you know if we can put the three-in-one backpack vac on here without an adapter as opposed to using the dust collection, the dust bag. Yo, that's a winner. That's a winner. winner? Yeah, it's on there. You know, obviously I would want to be able to secure this a little better so it, it will slide back and forth. The one thing that I'm hearing a lot is that Milwaukee has done a great job of improving dust collection over the 10 inch double bevel sliding motor saw. And they do that by moving this rubber booty down, okay? Captures more of the saw dust. We have our most common bevel stops. These bevel stops work with the most common crown molding profiles and their spring angles, okay? We have a set on both sides, so you can bevel to the left and to the right, okay? They work in conjunction with these other presets, 22 and a half, 31.6, 35.3. We're marked out at 35.3, right? But there's no, there's no positive stop there. We do have a positive stop at 31.6. We do have a positive stop at 22.5. Then, of course, 45 and 60. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, positive stops. Okay, we're locked down, all right? Let's go to the other side. Not bad on this side. Now, let's go back to this side. little bit right on this side of the saw this is the thing if 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 it was if it was equal on both sides then there's an opportunity to adjust the motor scale is it at a tremendous amount no but you know we have to make note of these things Otherwise, you know, what should we do? Just be like, you know, hey, here's the motor stall, buy it. You know what I mean? This is what you would expect, I, I would assume. Anybody that's crying that says we're being too critical, you, you just want us to confirm your, your, buying, your buying choice already, then click off the video. You know what I mean? What are you here for? If you've already decided to buy it and you love it, what do you care what we say for? Don't watch the video. But if we find something, small as it may be, we want to let you know about it. Here's the part you came for. How does it cut? We got a full 12 amp hour battery. Whoa, look at that. I guess we're going to take a look at the positioning system as well. It's got a nice break on it. I will say the positioning system, pretty good. What if you had a mounting plate that fit on the pack out that you mounted onto the bottom of the saw and you just slid it right onto your pack out? What do you think about that? 
leave it down in the comment section below. If you've already invented that, then good idea, I guess. I don't know. I will say it cut through, it cut through like butter. I mean, literally felt pretty awesome. You'll see. You ready? You ready? Okay, so that's, that's, that's the cut. That's, that's the cut. That's how much it's out. Okay, when I put it against the cut, that, that's your cut. That's what it's giving you, okay? Ooh. So, the dust, the dust itself is pretty good. Okay, to the right side, it, it's negligible to me. Like, I, I, I think that that's, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But some of you, you know, if you're going to spend $699 or $899, you, you might say, you know, that's a no-go. A lot of you are going are gonna to build custom fences anyway. You know, it, might, it, it doesn't matter. You're going you're gonna to shim it out. You're going you're gonna to build up your fence. It, it might not matter to you. But for some of you, it, it, maybe it will matter. Maybe some of you are going to use this for framing. I, you know, I, I'm, only say, I'm only showing you what I can see. I will say this. The amount it's out to the left is, is definitely greater than to the right. Okay? We're going to do 245s. Pretty tight, pretty tight. You can see that, not bad at all. I, I will tell you this much, vast, vast improvement, vast improvement over the 10 inch, in my opinion. Vast improvement, let's flip it over. I mean, it's, it's very, it's, it's only one by, it's pretty simple. You know, the more intricate um, the molding, the more the cut really matters. But this this looks pretty good. All right, let's make the cut. And you know, I'm not saying that that's the way you would cut generally. But let's just say you were you were cutting an extremely tall skirt board. Okay, some of the older houses have huge skirt boards. You might have no choice but to cut flat. Use your sliding capability instead of up against the fence and bevel. Use the bevel function. That's what it's there for. Now, it doesn't look bad, but like I said, this is this is simple one by. You know, getting that to match up is not nearly as tough when you have a more intricate molding detail that's when it really counts but this looks pretty good i mean the one by is matching up even though it seems as though we have a small variance in in the in the fence i know what a lot of you are saying but vince how's it do in hardwoods we got a special treat for you i got a piece of oak here oak's pretty hard let's see how it does It did pretty good. I want to. I want to test something though. But let's make another cut. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Like no stall and plenty of power. We are getting a little, I mean, I, I was forcing it through the cut there. Yeah. 
That felt, that felt pretty good. We do have a little splintering. That's a product of the blade. We're in there. If I, if I run this square, that's how much the cut's out. See that? It's, it's minuscule. No, there's no stuttering. There's no, I, I feel like we have a little bit of a, an issue with the fence on the left side here, but I'm not, I'm not getting any drag through the material. Saw is plenty powerful, okay? We're not getting any, any blade shatter through the material. And, you know, quite frankly, this is a little bit faster cutting. I'd like a couple more tefises to be, to be cut to, 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 for an even finer finish. But this is a finished blade. It's a pretty doggone good blade. I mean, you, can, you could probably, through soft materials for trim work, you could stick with this blade all day long. You have a perfectly, you know, you know perfectly ready to prepare surfaces and materials with that blade. The saw is extremely light. I will say it's extremely powerful. It's set up for what we need to do with it for now. Let us know if you want to see some other videos with it where maybe we cut, you know, structural, like two by members or, or pressure treated. You know, we'll swap out the blade. We'll make a follow-up video. Let us know down in the comment section below. If you like the video, you like the content, you like knowing what to expect when you drop $699 or $899 on a tool, then smash the like button. It's free for you to do. You didn't have to spend the do re me to find out everything that's in the box with the saw, get it set up, and to know, you know, have a good idea of what to expect from it. Smash the like button, it's free for you to do and it helps out the channel immensely, we appreciate it. With that, I wanna say, I appreciate each and every one of you being here with us during this unboxing. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you all on the next one. I'm gonna get a little more familiar with this. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're gonna get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy. And you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later. <laughs>